add a little bit more too about how we might present foods to kids. Um, Highland mentioned earlier too, we want to make the experience as fun as possible when possible. And so it's important to recognize the way in which we present foods can oftentimes encourage more engagement, interaction, and ultimately consuming foods. Um, so a lot of the suggestion, a lot of the, the things you see here have some good opportunities. Maybe um, your child is eating very, um, you know, one color foods. And we also mentioned too, it's a lot of times it's chicken nuggets, French fries, toast, cereal, chips. Those are all one color. So what a fantastic opportunity to learn about the different colors that foods come in with pizza. A lot of our kids eat pizza, but they only eat cheese pizza or they only eat pizza that's plain, maybe a little bit of sauce. So what's really nice is perhaps maybe as a family, we're going to make a rainbow pizza. Um, and look at all the different colors and variables that can be added that exist in the world. So what another great opportunity that can happen for kiddos in, um, in being having food presented this way is maybe you can also incorporate a lot of what you're working on in the meal preparation. A lot of what we do, engaging with foods, slicing fruit, spreading um, a spread, pouring uh, dry pasta into, a, into the pot, um, are you stirring soup when it's being made, whatever it is that you're doing, if there's an opportunity there for your child to support you and assist, what a great way to learn about foods also. I think a lot of times what happens for our kiddos too is they don't know why, what is in their food once it's on their plate. And so having them participate in the mealtime process or having them create some of these fun sculptures gives them opportunities to understand, huh, I didn't realize that, you know, carrots sliced and cooked with flour and made into a dough and then baked is bread. You can make bread with that. Whoa. You know, um, I think a lot of times kids just see the food in front of them and that's it for them. <laughs> They're, they've decided they don't want it, but perhaps getting them involved in the process may support them, may support that. We can get really creative here. Um, I've been known to create some fun faces with food where maybe the child will eat toast and hummus, but they will not touch um, olives or popcorn, or, or I think this isn't popcorn. This looks like um, maybe like uh, scrambled eggs, um, olives and things like that. So we're going to decorate. That's our job today is we're going to decorate. We might still only eat the bread and hummus, but isn't this great that we were able to learn about these other foods? And then guess what? The cucumber that's sitting on top of the hummus that touched a little bit of hummus. I wonder what it tastes like if we were to just lick the hummus off. Oh, I wonder, Ooh, interesting. Cucumbers are crunchy. What if I bite that with a little bit of hummus on? So there's some really great natural opportunities for food exploration in some of these fun activities. Um, we can make pepper eyes, you know, that's bringing food to your face. Even if it's up here, it's, all, it's pretty close to your mouth versus out here. So maybe we're going to make some pepper glasses. Um, maybe we're going to try a couple different types of ants on a log. Um, I know this is a pretty antiquated snack, um, but it, what it does, um, it, it, celery tends to be not the most favorite of snacks for a lot of our kids. But what it does is it creates opportunities for kids to learn about foods, even if what they're eating is really just the peanut butter or the cream cheese or the hummus or the avocado that's inside. Now the celery, they're also getting some of that flavor. If they just lick off the peanut butter, they're still tasting some of that celery. Um, so it gives, it, it takes again, some of that pressure off, presents foods in an interesting and novel way, and hopefully will encourage more engagement. 